Hello guys, welcome back to another video, and it has been far too long since I have had to say that. Um, yeah, it's, what to say, it's been a long time. Um, if you didn't see in my Discord, um, I, I have made a couple announcements there. I'm very busy with school. I recently started a master's program in history, um, so I'm being swamped with readings, and soon enough I will be getting swamped with writing. Um, so that means I'm not going to be able to make as many videos. Um, however, I'm still going to be playing cards, I'm still going to be involved in the community, um, which means I'm still going to make the occasional video um, when I find the time, when I find the motivation. Um, and again, uh, please join my Discord if you want to stay up to date. Um, in I, I'm still making some cards content that's just not in video form, so it's not going to be on my YouTube. Um, but uh, and, other parts of the intro um, also moved uh, a bunch of stuff recently, which means I now have my uh, massive War Bonds poster um, from the 2021 World Championship with me here. I'll have to figure out a way to set it up back there at some point. Um, and uh, some other housekeeping you might have seen in the OCC I got fourth um, on Saturday, uh, a little less than a week ago. Um, yeah, it didn't work out. Brought some fun decks, though. Um, really, really fun decks, and had a ton of fun playing, especially the third place match against uh, TB. Ton of fun. And one last thing I wanted to do um, before we get into what we're actually going to be doing today, playing some games, you get to see some good old J-King gameplay. Um, is I literally just opened the game. This, I, I think, just came out like an hour or two ago. Um, the brand new 7th Armored Division card back, which is the Desert Rats card back. Look at this. Look at these little guys. This is easily one of the best card backs they've ever made. That is a uh, instant purchase for me. All right, so what are we actually going to be doing today? Um, I, I it did consider doing a road to rank one, um, since if you look down here, I'm like a thousandth, uh, and we don't have a ton of time left in season. However, I figured if I'm not gonna make a ton of videos, um, people have probably seen enough Jagro gameplay um, I'm not gonna jump straight into the Jagro, instead I'm gonna give you guys something spicy, um, something to, uh, really, really get those gears turning. So today, instead of playing Jagro, instead of playing Credit Denial, instead of playing the decks you've seen far too much, let's play a deck you haven't seen enough of, which is Air. Um, however, this is not gonna be your standard Air, this is, this is not, uh, your uh, grandma's heir, so to speak. This is a deck that I spent a couple uh, hours working on a few days ago, just having some fun, and honestly found a shocking amount of success with. It is Britain US Air with uh, three copies of the HMS Hermes. This card is insane, trust me. Now, I know I have a lot of hot takes, and I stand by them, most of them. Gambit's insane. Um, but trust me when I say, Hermes is so good. Now, it's very, very easy to think of times where Hermes is not good, which is any point from turns 1 to 5, um, or like 1 to 10 if you're playing against Credit Denial, where you just can't play the card. I'm not running really any form of um, credit reduction. I thought about running um, the Pioneer Regiment, in this deck, whoops, um, I don't want to put the cards in my deck, here we go, I thought about running the 85 Pioneer Company in this deck, um, this deck runs a ton of orders, the problem with it is this is a card in your support line, which means you get less swordfishes from Hermes, even if you do get Hermes out for a credit cheaper, um, but where Hermes actually really shines is the fact that basically nobody runs board clears beyond supply shortage, um, like, there's the occasional front line out there, but whatever. Um, so they actually have to kill all of your swordfishes through trading, normally. Um, which is really, really difficult, because it's four three health targets. Um, which is very, very, very costly, and at the minimum, um, it's gonna go one for one. I actually, I don't even think... Yeah, like, I've seen it go one for one, like, maybe when your opponent plays, like, a Stars and Stripes, in that case, it's one for one with, like, the best card in their deck against you. Um, so, you know, you'll take that. 
Sometimes you play this and it just heals you so much because you're against a Jagro and they want to go face. They even might even have 12 damage and they want to go face with that. But they can't because if they go face and leave you with a board full of bombers for one single turn, you're just going to swing the board entirely. Um, and then, of course, you have the pretty standard payoffs for spawning a bomb full of... Uh, a board full of bombers, which is four close air supports, just really, really cheap buffs to... Uh, get their attack up to actually start dealing damage to your opponent. Uh, same with the Greyhounds. I considered Alliance, actually. Um, however, there's... I, I do run three Swordfish, two Albacore in the deck, um, and I just think the flexibility of close air support makes it so much better than Alliance, even even if you are trying to get these huge boards. Um, but the key card in this deck beyond Hermes is the P38 Lightning. This lets you put on so much pressure and makes these constant boards you're able to spawn over and over and over so terrifying. Um, but then, what else makes this deck work is four supply shortage and a carpet bombing. Uh, also a Monsoon Rot. This is for control decks where sometimes they can just try to ignore a board full of one attack bombers and go face. Um, then you, you have a Monsoon Rot. But the four supply shortage, carpet bomb, um, really the point of this is to respond to these huge boards in a way you can't anymore with Empire Strikes. And what made Empire Strikes so strong is it, it was a huge tempo play. Because you would summon these bombers, and then you would destroy their board. So their board was clear, and you have these bombers. Supply shortage doesn't clear the board fast enough, so they can refill after you play supply shortage. Carper Bomb costs too much to really play alongside a heap of bombers from hand. Um, so you kind of just have to run a lot of removal, so that way you're not worried about playing it. Um, you can just tank some hits, play it out quickly. Um, I mean, like honestly, the Albacore and the Swordfish is here. You can just play out to soak up damage, um, because the, the longer, the more your opponent is trying to trade with your bombers, the less damage they put in face, and the more likely they are to put more units on the board, and eventually you just slam a Carver Bombing and then slam a Hermes and they run out of removal and you crush. Um, and then, of course, to help you get up to these six cost cards, there's uh, two War Machines, two United We Stands. Um, this was... When I was playing around with this deck to begin with, um, that's what I was very unsure about, is I thought I would need more ramp. I originally had four War Machines and I thought, well, I want a bit of a removal, so United We Stand. Honestly, I've been perfectly fine with the War Machine two war machines being enough ramp, and I have had points where United We Stand is difficult to play because I don't want to give my opponent the extra credit. Um, so I was actually just thinking here, what if we put in another Greyhound, and then is there any particular elites? Um, the 6th Airlanding Brigade, looks like an honorable mention, Kitty Hawk was one that I wanted in the deck but recently took out. Um, also very easily could run another Convoy. This deck can struggle for card draw, which is bizarre. It runs uh, th three convoys, sincerely yours, Lendlease. Um, I didn't want to go up to two Lendlease, just because I, I don't know, running four six-cost cards and then, not even just cards, orders. Running four six-cost orders and then three seven-cost orders seems a bit much. Um, so yeah, I think Kitty Hawk, Airland and Brigade, um... I'll go with the Kitty Hawk. Uh, I have had some issues where uh, I can't play Cass. But yeah, th this is the deck. Um, and of course, we're going to put on the new Desert Rats card back. Look how cute this is. Um, kind of looks like a squirrel. And yeah, we're, we're just going to queue into ranked. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? And this deck is actually good. Like, I'm not memeing here. This this is not like a a um it's some weird meme decks that I've done in the past. Whoever got me to play, uh, is it not Shore Bombardment? Well, whatever that terrible Japan card was in with Commandos. Um, no, this is like an actually good deck. I went uh, eleven zero in my first games with it. After that, I started queuing into German Italy control with triple sudden strike Sky Barons and Schwalbe, which felt targeted. Um, but it still have a very good win rate on this deck, so we're just going to show off some games uh, on a spicy new deck. The deck code will be in the description, and if it's not, comment, because I meant I forgot it and I'll post it in the comments after that. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's finally get into some gameplay. Ten minutes into this video, and the first video in a long time. 
What a performance there by J King. J King, full plot armor. J King is pushing himself into the ranks of the legend. J King is our world champion. J King Seven. What? The back-to-back -back cards world champion. All right. Um, game one, we have Japan. I mean, <laughs> let's be honest, we're just keeping supply shortage. This is a really bizarre deck because if you can get a turn one swordfish, obviously you want a turn one swordfish because turn one swordfish going first is never bad. Um, however, you don't need it. Like with the supply shortages, you can really just even play a slow game. Like I, I had a game against Jagro where um, I essentially did nothing. Like, I think I passed on one and two, and then, like, did Convoy on three, Albacore on four, which died on board, just to, like, avoid dying. Uh, and I, I finally played Supply Shortage on turn seven. Like, I finally drew a Supply Shortage on turn seven, and I just came back in the game. Like, I was on, like, eight health, but I did Supply Shortage into HMS Hermes Supply Shortage uh, on nine, and then, like, was just able to control the board from that point on. So yeah, this it's not that this deck has like crazy recoverability, like Sincerely Yours is the only heal, um, and it can be a bit slow to get on board, but it's more just like you have to, it's a little bit like tokens actually, in that way where it's like you just keep summoning board after board with these Hermes, and they have to remove it or they just get blown out instantly, um, and you're just like removing their units efficiently enough that they can't remove it. Um, I mean, I think I'm going to do this. Like, if he has 35T type 93, that just kind of sets up for a nice supply shortage. Get that um, signal measurement taken down. That's not good. That is decidedly not good. Um... I guess he played Cavalry. If he hadn't played Cavalry, like, I'd, I've seen all of these other cards in Japan, Poland, Legions. The fact that he has played Cavalry is, uh, pretty suspicious. <laughs> As to, uh, confirming that he is on Jagra. Oh, that is spicy. Are we gonna see a counter-offensive come out? Okay, that's a lot less spicy. Um, I don't have to supply shortage this. Like, if he's running Winter Warfare and Jagro, it means he's like absolutely playing counter offensive. Um, so let's get rid of these things. It's also a nice card with the War Machine. We can always carpet next turn. I didn't want to get rid of this um, signal as fast as possible. Is that going to be a sickle? Yep. Maybe he's running 34th guards like a crazy person. Um. Okay, I think we're doing second supply shortage. This clears the board at the cost of another two damage. He has a full uh, hand, but whatever. And we also have another carpet to go. Well, like, look at this. Like, what does he do against Hermes? Oh, that's bad. Hmm. Well, I think we just have to eat the uh, slightly disappointing only three swordfish Hermes. I mean, if you consider the swordfish is just a card you run in the deck, like, look at this. Um, this is... You're spending six credits for three one-drops. However, that's all in one card, which means you're also drawing um, two cards. Like, this is basically just like a Night Hunters minus the uh, From the People, but plus one health. And the British 
bombers, which makes it substantially better than Night Hunters. But like, what is Jagro supposed to do here, other than just hand dump to try to deal with these? Which walks directly into a Kuiper Bomb, um, or if I still have enough frontline control, I can even just slay him at a second Hermes. Um... I think we Monty for draw here. Oh, another Hermes. Sure. <laughs> Let's just get some more swordfish going. I heard you liked swordfish. Uh, the fact that we're down three Greyhounds is kind of annoying, but we have like four casts in the deck, three lightning in the deck. All of those are going to turn these swordfish into beasts. And he's played Bombing Raid, Audacity, and Shenano. So his actual like ability to get rid of these outside of trading is very low. And without German ally, doesn't have those blitz tanks. It's going to be hard. Hopefully he doesn't just do like Shide in here. Although, if he has Shiden, I'd be fine with him playing it here, but just hopefully he doesn't have Shiden. Um, okay. It's a pretty easy Carver Bomb. Not quite enough credits on the Havoc here. So, let's just clear the board. Um, we'll go face. I feel like this pushing up the one one, like I'm just gonna winter warfare me. Maybe play a bicycle. Yeah, cycle it. It's perfectly fine. Yokosuka. Played that on the wrong side though, because if I killed Aichi, the other Aichi's over here, and the Yokosuka goes down to one. And lightning. All right. I don't believe there is lethal here. I can get him for. Like if I had one extra spot on the board. Do I want to put him... Oh, I'll, I'll just go face. What's the worst that can happen? Like, look at this. He had basically all of his, um, the tools. Oh, am I dead? No way, dude. No way! <laughs> what? Okay. Well, um, Hermes is bad, I guess. Uh, <laughs> what? Okay. Well, let's uh, get to the next game. All right, next game. Um, also, I was just thinking, I have like four losses on this deck, something like that. Um, one of the other losses was also to Japan Soviets that um was like completely dead on board and killed me by you played um, Honor and Final Push for exactly the last guides in hand. So, uh, yeah. Homie's apparently just hard countered by Final Push Jagro. You heard it here first. Well, this is a Pretty easy turn. If he has the sickle, he has the sickle. Um, but if he has the sickle, I'm still fine with this. Cause then I got a two-four greyhound. Uh, 
That's pretty spicy. Now, obviously, having the 52k there is really good for him. Um, but, like, 52k is just always going to be good against me. So, definitely could be worse. I'm probably fine playing this card. Now, obviously, the lightning is a is super important card, but, I mean, it, unless he does, like, second 52k sickle, in which case, like, my bad for queuing with air, I guess. Okay, well, that's a pretty easy Monty. Hmm. Do I push up to prepare for Hermes? Or do I try to keep the lightning back? Um, I could try to keep the lightning back. Um, and just accept one less bomber. Because it looks like he's playing like hard anti aggro Brit Soviet control, which means he might run Kuiper bombs. So it doesn't actually matter how many bombers I get out of Hermes. And yeah, let's just summon four swordfish. It's a pr pretty good card. Now, obviously, you kills the lightning, but I have a, a good... Oh my goodness. That is a little upsetting. I'm not going to lie. Um, here, we can just do supply. It kills the T60, and it sets up being able to do Monsoon Rot Albacore next turn to take out KV and then whatever else he draws. That would plays. Hopefully he plays something big here rather than like he could just attack base with KV pass. Well it's not exactly the card I wanted to see. Um there's just so many big guys, but I also can't leave this on the board. Yeah, let's take out the KV. We still have the two uh, card combo here. Man, that was such a brutal monsoon route. Dude, why are you playing like anti air? <laughs> that is not the draw we needed to see. Oh, <sighs> this. Playing air, um, like basically every game I've played this season. I've played a bit of Jaguar, but I've played like maybe 20, 20 something games of this deck. The number of times I've seen people just like hard text for air still blows my mind. It's this second winter warfare, and he has the red banner. Two pounder, that's a spicy one. Um,. Okay, so this, in theory, keeps the T-34 from connecting face this turn. Obviously not with a sickle, but... Armored Train... Well, that's not a terrible draw. Not a terrible draw at all. Now, I could use some card draw this game. Um. Yep, I could use one of those. <laughs> what is this guy's deck? Oh. K. 
Okay. Well, we're going to do the Herbies, because Wellington is reactive. Um, like, we, we could clear the board there, actually. Um... Now, this is when he like, plays Kyber Bomb and my soul dies, but... Okay, presumably he's doing something here. What? Okay. This is also making me glad I'm not playing Jagro. I mean, presumably this guy has... Um, healing. As well as the guards and AoE. Monsoon Rot, double Winter Warfare, double enemy at the gates. Bold. Yep, there's the healing. And, yeah, I mean, okay. Sure. Guy has turned 352k. To a whoa, and he misses lethal. Okay, we're still at, no, never mind. Wait, what? Okay, guy turbo missed lethal. Come on! <laughs> what? <laughs> Never punished. Okay, is this guy Chica? Is this guy actually trolling me? I'm so confused. Sure, Ultra. Like, if he kills me right here with this T-34, he's hard trolling. Oh my god, dude! <laughs> okay. Um, well, we haven't won yet, but you can't say the games haven't been entertaining. <laughs> Let's Q again. Man, I was so excited to show off this sick deck and, like, show how well it does into meta decks, and now I'm just getting, like, crushed by the jankiest stuff that has ever existed on ladder. Yeah, this is a really good hand if this is Jagro. Please just be standard Jagro. Like, straight ripped from the OCC lineup Jagro. Oh my. Like, never before have I wanted to just queue into, like, meta decks this badly. <laughs> just give me credit denial. <laughs> oh, not Tony OTK. Please. Oh, the oh boy, this is. Um, I'm gonna get the lightning on board. This is gonna hella let us put out the most damage possible. I think I can set up a two-turn lethal from this point. Now, obviously, he's going to do do anything like plays a unit, removes a unit, heals like, literally anything stops at a two-turn lethal in this situation, but it is possible, and that's what counts. Am I gonna get sniped here? The fact that I'm playing around sniped tells us the current state of the world. I guess by playing around sniped, I didn't play around in the Navy. Oh, please. Okay. Hmm. This is interesting, actually. I think we dropped the supply shortage. Or do we? Here, we're even gonna drop the Albacore. Like, he, he seems pretty high on th into the air stuff. Um, so, I wanna keep my presence on board. Are you just gonna rip that? Okay. Sure. Just slam Hermes. Now, this is the hand to buff Hermes. 
Which means we're gonna die this turn to, like, Shiden bolster final push, probably. <laughs> okay. Another key. Was this guy also the guy who did... Yeah, this is the guy who did Dragon Slayer. Dragon Slayer double key on acid. With a double war machine opener. Sounds about right. Um. Oh, that is good. That's five. <sighs> Not enough to use, though. That's really annoying. If I do one, two, three, what is, how good is that compared to one, five, six, seven, eight? Yeah, actually, that's not five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's not terrible. Yeah, there's actually there's quite a few interesting lines you can go for with this deck. Um, a lot of pushing bombies to the front line. If you liked pushing bombies to the front line with air, you will like this deck. Why is that in your... Oh my goodness, stop just having every elite in your deck. Oh, okay, that's either really, really good or really, really bad. We're about to find out. Um, is he just dead? Yeah, he's just straight up dead. What is the best way to kill him here? This is 6 damage. This is less than 6 damage. And... Yep. Okay. <laughs> For a second there, I was worried that I just can't count. Um, but yeah, look at that. I mean, okay, we, we did get a very good hand. We had all three lightnings, but, um, yeah, that, that is how the deck is supposed to work. Uh, and then with all the board clears and card draw, you're supposed to be able to do that not on turn six all the time. I mean, if you get it on turn six all the time, great, but, um, yeah, basically you try to stall out and then do turns like that. Um, and, yeah, we're just getting straight into the next game against Jachibai. Uh, hopefully this is standard meta Jagro. Um, I mean, I, I, oh my. <laughs> okay, this guy, like, this, this guy kept, like, three cards in about, like, two seconds. So this guy is definitely Jagro. We're just gonna keep this. Um, yep, here it comes. Okay, so... I'm actually happy to get into Jagro because I think this deck has a pretty good win rate into both Jagro and Credit Denial. Um, I think I'm 3-0 against Standard Jagro and 2-1 against Credit Denial. Oh, draw last because Jagro's hard. Um, I'm gonna do this trade because if he does push up two Japan units to the front line to get the one extra attack damage, it means I'm three for one in him, which I'm happy with, so. And boop. Let the value train commence. Okay. Buddy. <laughs> Maybe I should have kept three supply <laughs> shortages. Uh, hopefully that last guy in his hand is an enigma. Oh, it's gonna be like Mitre 35T or something, or Type 90. That actually would be perfectly fine, because I'd kill Mitre with Havoc. This dies at the start of his turn anyways. Bombing, right? It's interesting.
Um, do I want this on the board? I think so. Well, I know I know the tank dies anyways. I just want the bomber on the board. Um, most of his deck is infantry, so it doesn't matter. It's interesting. Um, do I want to drop second cast here? I think I hold it. I don't really see a reason to play second cast here, because I'm going to be havoc in next turn, like 90%. Although, maybe I want to... Can I go face, actually? What's that going to be? 10 damage? Okay, well, I can't go face with type 94. He's gonna go face though. Um. Well, that's happening. Do we just go face anyways? Oh, it is so tempting. <laughs> I have the carpet bombing in hand too. I think we go face. Like we definitely don't kill the twenty fourth, because he draws anyways. Audacity, sure. Yeah, that's fine. And close. One credit off. Um, and if we actually hadn't played this last turn, would that be lethal? Well, we deal three less. Maybe actually. <laughs> um, no, this is a pretty simple carpet bombing turn. And we're going to go face. Maybe. Maybe I could have pushed up there, um, actually, just because this way if he top decks like Rising Sun and then I, I don't even know what, but look at that, um, pretty handedly crushed Jagro, um, despite him having a pretty good hand. I mean, I also had a very good hand, I'm not going to lie. Uh, let's play one more game and see what the end score is, because we're currently 2-2, two -two. um, so if I go 3-2, Pretty, pretty solid evidence that this deck is great and you should start playing it on ladder right away. Alright, Germany. Uh, and that is a wild, wild name. I'm gonna start with the prayer that he doesn't have a Rado. Last Germany I fought was playing like old school anti-air. Don't do that. Man, if I get sudden strike here, I'm gonna be sad. Okay, well the fact that he's thinking suggests he doesn't have it. Um well, that means I Yeah, that's a pretty easy cast. I mean, just with the strength of Hermes and Lightnings, um, you're able to use cast much more liberally, I think. Then uh, past air decks, pincer, possibly. Like I know he hasn't played a pincer card yet, but like a everyone I see play pincer just like runs this guy's, runs uh, the fiftieth, because they're insane. Um. I'm like scared of playing swordfish because of careless talk. So we're also, just, we're just gonna go face, because also if it's German-Soviet, it means he probably has no healing. Uh, so face damage is never bad. Hmm. Well, the Ostracon's actually kind of scary, um, if you can turbo buff it here. 
I mean, next turn we can de put 7 damage into it. But, like, if he gets the heavy armor guy onto it, uh, things could look real bad real fast. Okay. Yeah, I'm about to get strangleholded. Do we actually leave this on board and try to take out some of the other stuff? I can see the argument for it. Look for like a sexton. Well, I mean with the board clear, like if I draw a carpet bombing, these guys don't matter. Ooh. Okay. Well, this is very bad. Well, this is very bad. <laughs> um I think the play is, well, sincerely yours, Monty. It's a good start. Although, honestly, I could have, like, held off on Monty, maybe. Do I carpet next turn? I mean, I think our plan for this Ostracon is either find a Sexton or find, um... Hmm. Or find, uh, Monsoon Rot. Okay, so if he trades here, we do supply shortage Hermes. And then, like, honestly, we're kind of in a fine spot. Like, yes, he has a 9-10. However, we have four swordfish. Okay, that's very good, because <laughs> if he actually top decked a pincer there, we'd be in a rough spot. He, what? I can't, it's a 9-9, nine -nine. I can't kill it! <laughs> I mean, I can kill it in hand, but he doesn't know that. Okay, we take those. Um, and I think that's where I'm going to end off the video today. Uh, we, we have climbed ELO, we're into top 1,000 with triple Hermes. Um... I will have the deck code in the description, but once again, if you want to look at the deck, here it is. Um, some considerations. I've been thinking of taking out Monsoon Rot for Carpet. I've been thinking of taking out Carpet for Monsoon Rot, the wiggle room there. Um, I'd love to get a pair of C into this deck. Uh, maybe I can do that instead of Kitty Hawk. Um, but yeah, uh, very, very fun deck. Uh, a fun, interesting way to play air in this current meta that's actually quite good. I think competitively viable. Uh, just stay away from final push decks. Um, but yeah, again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll reiterate, I can't promise when the next time I will post be. Um, I'll probably make a couple road to rank ones, because I do intend to get top six, or try to get top six this month. Um, and if you're new here, if you haven't done it already, please subscribe, uh, so you don't miss the next time I do drop a video. And also, once again, please consider joining my Discord. Um, because that way you'll be able to stay uh, connected, stay 
on top of what is going on uh, with me and my content and chat with like-minded people who are also interested in cards and card analysis. So now I will actually end the video. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.